brother read through love. So we see another, and I'll give you an example of the difference. There's a unity of the believers, a unity that God gives us through the Holy Spirit. There's a unity of the world that produces something else. So in Genesis 11, we see that there was a unity that wasn't going to glorify God. If you read it, and you all know about the Tower of Babel. How many have heard of the Tower of Babel? You all know the story, right? If you read the scriptures there, it says that they were in one purpose, one heart. They were all together. They were unified. But there was a difference. They were doing it for a name for themselves. They were not doing it to reveal the Son of God. So it wasn't to give God glory. So there's a difference. So our unity as believers is to reveal Jesus. The unity of the world is for self. And it leads to chaos and disruption. Amen? So basically... Um, I want to go to, which I think he already read it in John. Okay, and my brother, Pastor Moses, already stole some of the thunder I was going to share out of the book of Acts in chapter 2, verses 42 to 46, but I do want to go ahead and read that so we can kind of just uh, focus and, and just really discern. Yep, so Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 46, we're going to read, and I'll read that real quick. Let me know when you're all are there. Say amen. amen. Yeah. All right. So in 42, it says, And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And what? In fellowship. That's right. And in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. And sold their possession and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord, Honda Accord, right? No. <laughs> In the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. It says, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So... This unity is something, it comes through love. You, this is not something you can produce, you know. You know, we can work out and get muscles and, you know, you can go on certain diets. But the reality is this comes through exactly what it says here. The discipline and the commitment is right here. It says they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, it says, know those whom you labor with in the scriptures. So the more time you spend with somebody, like my beautiful wife. I love my wife. I spend time with her. Amen. <laughs> Bishop Bruni. But um, so it is important to cultivate a lifestyle of unity through God's love. But where does that come from? Like, it's not like what I'm saying is you don't just get with people and think it's going to automatically happen. Where does this start? Can anyone tell me where it starts? How do you get to that place where you're able to be unified with others? Anyone know? It starts with you. Intimacy with the Lord. You need to have intimate time with the Lord. When you have, when, see, I don't know about y'all. I don't want to get, start preaching here. But <laughs> I don't know how many people you've met that say, oh, they're deep into the word. And they're spirit filled and this and that. And. They're as sharp as a razor. They could care less, very insensitive, and they can't unify. They're very distant or disconnected. That's not God. That's not the work of God. I don't care how much you know the word. If you do not have a desire in you after spending time with the Lord to rejoice when you see a brother and say, Wow, hey, you love Jesus too. Hey, I love Jesus. Hey, let's get together. Hey, let's worship. There's something that should be in you. And it is through the Holy Spirit. The scripture says that the Holy Spirit teaches us to love one another, right? So if you're spending time in the word and you're, and you're in prayer, the Holy Spirit should be working in your heart, this desire to love the brethren. So this is not something where, you know, you know all scriptures on the planet and you don't want to hang with anybody. So I like this one. It says, how many of you like eating? We love that, don't we? So we have an intimate God that if you look at the gospel, so many times Jesus, when he ate, he, can you imagine the God of the universe who created everything is sitting down eating rice and beans and drinking an espresso Cuban coffee, right? 
<laughs> Praise God. So God is, that's how intimate the fellowship. And, you know, we look at Jesus, but I, I want to get your focus on something. Remember, Jesus is God. He's awesome. He's Lord. But this comes from the Father's heart. The Father gave Jesus to us. Amen? Amen. That intimacy, and the reason I'm sharing this is because people have a tendency to see Jesus and they go, oh, well, he's the merciful one. He's the one that sits down with us. It came from God the Father. It came from the Father's heart. The Father said, I love you. I want to sit down and eat and break bread with you. I want to have that intimate time. I want to just hold you, behold you, look at you. This is from the heart of the Father. Amen? Amen. So we need to always remember that, that God the Father, His heart was to give His Son to us, to reveal Him. Amen? Amen. So when we as believers are united, we reveal Christ. And this is God's will for us. It says uh, in the NLT, I normally don't read the NLT, but... <laughs> Uh, who has 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14? And it'll be NLT. I chose the NLT. It doesn't take away. I like the, it just kind of enhances this there. The NLT, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Can someone read that, please? Amen. So, again, our unity should be reflecting a sweet aroma of Christ. Amen? Amen. Like when people get around us, there should be this aroma of Jesus that people, they can't understand it. You know, and I'll share this. I'll never forget. My wife and I were at a Walmart one time. This was years back. Uh, One of the ministers that we knew from Virginia Beach was there. and, And we were just, it was amazing because there was a spirit of, it almost seemed chaotic. How many know about Walmart? You know how it is, okay? It used to be called God Mart at one point when it was all good. But basically, we went there, and when we met with this brother and his wife at the time, we, we sensed this just like chaos was going on throughout the store. And all of a sudden, we came together. We united as believers, and we started praying. And all of a sudden, there was a calm. I'm, I'm not talking about a little Walmart neighborhood market. I'm talking about the super Walmart. You all know how big those stores are, okay? The, it was a quiet. How did it happen? We just came together, believers in covenant with Jesus Christ. And when we united together in prayer and we stood there and we started praying, it was like this aroma of peace and, and just quiet went everywhere. And everybody, it was, it, we even talked about it. We said, what happened here? It was madness. And now everybody's like just floating, floating. So, you know, this is one of the, the how should I say, one of the effects that is manifested through our lives. When we're unified, it reveals the sun and his aroma is seen. Now, this is not just when we're, you know, I'm a, uh, how should I say, I'm a strong believer and Moses knows whatever we do in word or deed, we do as unto the Lord. That means that aroma should be seen in your workplace. That aroma should be when you go out in the street. It's not something that, yes, we're united here and hopefully everyone loves me. I love you. But we're supposed to reflect this unity. There should be something in us that we're so unified with the Lord. We're joined to the Lord. He, it says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with Him. So when we're walking, wherever we go, we should be reflecting that union of Christ to others. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm going to go to Ephesians 4. I told you I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. So hopefully you love the Word of God. Yeah. All right, come on. So we're going to Ephesians um, chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 11. And all the way to 14. Amen. Who wants to uh, read that real quick? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 14. This is a very key, key scripture here. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry 
for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceit, deceitful schemes. What, where do I get to? Yeah, the end of, okay. I think that's the end of 14. There's a uh, wind of new teaching. We will not be influencing people. Okay, yeah, mine was reading differently. Okay, so that's right. I mean, that's, so again, look at, so he's given us, like it says here, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. And what is their responsibility? It's to equip us, right? So that we come to the unity, the unity of the faith, so full stature. So the Lord is not coming back for a defeated church. How many of you all understand that? Yeah. You know, and I think someone was praying, uh, I think Felix, you were praying about the, the spot, blemish. The Lord is not coming back for a church. And I want you to understand this. This is New Testament. One, a church that has spot, wrinkle, defeated, and oh, look at what's going on in the world, and we just not. That's not what scripture says. It says here that he's given us the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, and pastors, and teachers. Pastor Moses. Amen. Till we all come to the unity so that we're not tossed to and fro. So God's desire, our unity, is not just a sloppy agape. It's not for us just to gather and have a good old time. God's purpose for our unity is that we come to the maturity of Christ and that we impact the world we live in. Amen? Yeah. So that is one of the key things that we see in Scripture. So what we're facing right now is nothing. And uh, I think, Moses, you actually confirm. I was praying when I was, before I came up, you know, I, I was just asking the Lord uh, and praying regarding, like, the enemies of God and things that are going on. And like you said it, you know, are we loving our enemies? I mean, think about it. We've never been tested as a country on loving our enemies recently. I'm talking about in today's time as the church. The church has not been tested yet in loving our enemies. We can preach it from here, but when it comes to the reality of what we're seeing right now, you know, are we going to be able to do that? So we have to be united. We have to be into a stature of the fullness of the measure of Christ, what it says there. And that only comes through being united according to the word. Amen? Amen. Now, Ephesians 4, 1, 3, and I'll read that real quick so I don't, I don't hold you all up. It says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. This is the Apostle Paul, and he's saying that he is urging us to live a life worthy so do you think that this is not this is of no importance, like living a life worthy of the calling of your calling with the Lord? It's not something to take serious. I would say this is very serious. He says, be completely humble and gentle. How many humble people in here? Who's the most humble? No, don't raise your hand. He says, be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. So here we see again, worldly unity is superficial. There's a unity that comes through the Spirit of God that we see that is through God the Father's heart, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and He gives us that bond of unity, the peace, right? So He says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. So we're able to do that through the Holy Spirit that He's given us, amen? amen. So that's a big contrast from what we see in the world, wouldn't you say? I don't know if you noticed, but even in the world, when, when uh, it looks like they're united, I don't know if you noticed that all of a sudden there's like this chaos and the, there's this disruption and they're attacking each other because that's not real unity. The real unity is only through Jesus Christ, amen, amen. through His Holy Spirit. So we see that the early believers committed themselves into a lifestyle of unity uh, I know that all of us are busy. Uh, President Moses has to govern the country of Leesburg. <laughs> but, uh, you know, all of us, but we can't allow that. Again, it goes back to how much do you love? If you love God, you will love his people. Amen? Yes. You cannot say, I love God, yet you don't love his people. You know? And the, there's, again, we have differences, whether of this and that. 
But the love of God must be key. Amen? Amen. So basically, I'm going to take us again to another scripture here. I told you, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of, you're going to have some homework. Okay? Now, actually, before I go to that scripture, let me share. Um, so what are key things that will lead to unity? I, I already touched up on one. Where does it start? With who? Ourselves, Ourselves right? Okay. So things that are conducive to unity are what? And we saw it in the scriptures. Let's see if you guys remember. What did they do? They met daily. They met daily. They committed themselves to the apostles' doctrine. They were in what? Fellowship. They fellowship. They were in one place, like what we're doing here. They broke bread with one another. So, you know, like as church, as believers, and as people that we love and care, we, and when we break bread, we're doing what is conducive to that unity. We're doing what the scriptures actually say to do. And that leads to more unity. You know, so we get more connected. Now, there are a couple things that uh, disrupt the unity. Jesus warned that because of sin waxing, in the King James it says waxing, but I'll say increasing more and more as we see right now. I mean, we're living, how many of y'all believe we're living in the book of Timothy? Because I do. I mean, we're seeing first and second Timothy like never before. So he said because of sin that it would increase in the last days, the love of many would grow cold. This is, we already saw, like I was sharing, what is conducive to the unity. Uh, apostles' doctrine, committing, fellowship, meeting daily, breaking bread. So these things, having the love of God in us, is what leads to unity. Things that will disrupt it, allowing sin in our lives. Uh, disconnecting. Isolating yourself, saying, well, no, I don't need to do that. I don't need to go there. I don't need to, you know, I don't need a fellowship. No, I don't, you know, I'm not really, I don't want to serve. So not understanding your identity in Christ. And then another thing in the scriptures in Corinthians, when they were talking about the communion, they didn't discern the body. How many of you know that we are one body, though we are many members it doesn't matter what church you, you know, you can be from the church in New York City or, or on the West Coast, we're still one body. Now, of course, you know, providing sound doctrine is important. We're not into, you know, all kinds of uh, false teaching, but our foundation is Christ Jesus, Him crucified, the power of His resurrection, and Paul says, I preach nothing but that, Christ crucified and the power of His resurrection, and he made that clear. So if you have a brother that understands that and he says, I name the name of Christ, I follow him, and I preach him crucified in the power of his resurrection, and he is God in the flesh, then we know, okay, we're foundationally, whether he may not speak in tongues or I speak, it, that's, that has nothing to do with our unity. Our unity is in Christ. Amen? Amen? That's our foundation. He's our foundation, not the giftings. Amen? So we have to understand another thing that happens is when we don't discern the body in that way and we don't understand that, hey, I love Felix. Hey, I love Moses. I'm esteeming them better than myself. I'm not in competition with them. Then automatically I have unity. When I'm in, I don't understand who I am in my unity with union with Christ and how important that I need him. I need that brother to fulfill the fullness of what God wants to do in my life. I then, you know, if, if I don't see that, I'm going to disconnect and I'm going to be in competition. Well, I can, I can preach better than him or I can do this. Who does he? Man, don't you know? I know more, I know more scripture than that brother. Oh, you know, and that's where you see the disruption to unity. That's where contentions come in. People go to churches. They want to change this and they think they're better and, they, and they're missing the whole process they're missing the whole heart of God regarding unity our identities in Christ I don't identify I go to remnant church and I'm grateful but my identity is in Christ I love my brothers you know Kevin helped us serving here tonight everyone Felix so our identity is in Christ Jesus our union is with him and the unity is through him and in him amen it's not through, hey, I go to, uh, whether I'm at Revolution or Baptist of uh, Leesburg or whatever. Those are names. But we're one in Christ. We're one through Him, through the blood. Amen? So, 
You know, all throughout Old Testament and people try to say, oh, the Old Testament, God was angry. And actually, when I read it, I, I see God's love all through it. I'm going, oh, my God. You know, God is trying to unify his people. I mean, if you look at the scriptures in Old Testament, God creates man and women. He loves on them. He's trying to unify, create an offspring, like it says in, in uh, Malachi, that he wanted an offspring on the earth. Right. And so. All we see is throughout time and time again, in generations after generations, he's trying to get a people unified to reveal his son, to glorify him. Amen. Amen. So 1 Thessalonians 4.9, I will ask someone to read this one. This is a, a short one. Someone raise their hand. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9. Uh, here we go. Come on. I feel like Jerry Springer here. Can't I be know. Around. But, but you look better Let's than Jerry. 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 No, don't do that. <laughs> but we Moses. don't need to write to you about the importance of loving each other. For God himself has taught you to love one another. Okay. So who teaches us? So how, how do you get that love? Like I said, it starts with you, right? So you have to go into that secret place with the Lord and allow him to change your heart. Allow him to give you his heart, to give you the discernment of understanding the body of Christ. This is not my church. This is not your church. We're all one body. Amen. And we've seen it very quickly how, I mean, and I'm not going to get into politics here, but we see how quickly, you know, those who are anti-God can in a moment, Shut down a building or say, hey, you're not going to do this. Is there any discussion about, hey, well, you don't preach like I preach, so we're not, you know, no, everybody has every, how many of you all felt what happened in California with the churches? Did you all feel it? Because I did. I mean, my immediate reaction was like, dear God, we need to pray. We rebuke this. Lord, we ask for your favor. Why? How, how was that possible that a church that's 3,000 miles away from where we're living at in our busy life we stopped for a moment when we got the news and we were praying and saying, Lord, you know, you know, push back the forces of wickedness. The reason why is because it comes through love, number one. B, we're able to discern that that's part of our body. These are fellow believers that are undergoing attacks from the enemy. Amen. Amen. So that's when you realize that you're one. So whether it's the church in California, whether it's a church in China or, or Afghanistan, wherever it may be, we're one with them. We're not separated. And that's why it's so important that, you know, Paul puts it so good. He says, your brothers who are undergoing the same afflictions. So that's part of what discerning the body is. So again, we're only going to get to that place as we examine ourselves, spend the time with the Lord, you know, and understand his heart. Come to that place of saying, Lord, give me a heart for your people. I mean, Moses knows me. Uh, like I said, in about 2006 or so, uh, I was living my life. I think, where were we? Uh, Moses, I think we were in Altamont. Right, babe? We were in Altamont. We were living in Altamont. I had no burden for Leesburg or the Golden Triangle, as they call it. But I felt something was stirring up in my heart. Something was, was uh, like an urgency for, for prayer for the church. Like I was starting to discern something was wrong with the church, like as a whole. And I thought it was just in Central Florida. So I remember I started praying and then uh, I felt that God, like we, we came here, I'll cut it short for time, but I remember that when we got together with Moses, we prayed and I told uh, Pastor Moses about it. I said, the Lord wants to launch a national revival out of this place. I heard him speak that to me. Holy Spirit spoke clearly I want to launch a national revival out of this right here, this whole area. God still wants to do it. But let me tell you something. What would, you know, for all you sports people, what would it look like if your favorite football team goes out and the quarterback's eating his big old sub sandwich in the locker room and everyone's trying to figure out, do you think they're going to succeed? They're going to, they're going to, they're going to win that game? I don't think so. God is a holy God. God is holy. He is perfect. He does not make mistakes. There's no error with him. 
And he's not one who is going to give a little child a, a weapon that can destroy him. He's given us weapons, but if we don't grow and mature, how are we going to use it? How are we going to be fruitful and effective if we're not even exercising the unity, that love and understanding of his heart? Amen? So it's important. I mean, so basically, uh, when I had the, uh, how should I say, the, when I was praying and, and the Lord spoke that to me, I was like, I could feel the whole body, the whole church as a whole. So God just really birthed John 17. The gospel of John chapter 17 became so real to me. Uh, Gavin knows. Uh, I mean, it was my mission. I said, hey, man, we got to start stop building kingdoms of men. We need to lift up the kingdom of heaven. Jesus needs to be exalted. Amen. Yeah. You know, people were, uh, you know, and I understand it. I get it. Please understand me. But I will not apologize over the context of true scripture. So I'm sorry if this may offend you. Forgive me. But it is never my church, your church. We are one body. And when I looked at that scripture in John 17 and how the Lord is praying that we're one as the Father and Him are one? Amen. Are you kidding me? Like, He's perfect union. Like, that, that, that's a perfect union. And we can't even agree, uh, you know, well, we should have a curtain here. Or, you know, we're in a church building. Well, the TV should go there. You know, really? You know, it, it, it's just... It's crazy. So we are the ones that have to cultivate unity, starting with ourselves first, starting through that intimacy with Christ, spending time in the word, understanding the word. Again, understanding our identity, that we're joined with the Lord. We're one spirit with him. And through this, another cultivation, enjoying eating together. Amen. Enjoying eating, having coffee. By the way, that man made one of them. I can't wait. I'm, I'm waiting for that coffee. So, you know, but no, I want to really, you know, besides the, the scriptures that we see, I think it's important for us not to become complacent. Um, I think we're living in a time where, you know, personally, and I will share this, um, when I got born again, my experience, I did see amazing things from scripture in the book of Revelation. And even through that, that was back in 1988. And I'm not one to always say, oh, we're in the end times, we're in the end times, I, I you know, the time is now. We need to preach the gospel of Jesus now. Every day should be a last day. Amen? Yeah. Like, we, we, we sometimes get so focused and saying, hey, let's unify and we're, the Lord is coming out. We need to, every day, are we, are we doing what we're supposed to be doing for the gospel of Jesus? Amen? So, but anyways, my burden is still there to see his body united. And it's only going to happen through the maturity as we pursue the Lord and I ask that you look at these scriptures and don't, don't just read them like, uh, I mean, even look at it contextually, you know, get into it as Holy Spirit to reveal the importance because we are living in times that are going to require a unity among believers that we don't have time to play politics within the church, within one another. Um, you know, this is not about how much gifting. This is about God's love operating through each and every one of us. Me understanding that I need my brother's. You know, I need my sisters. You know, we need one another and we need to pray and we need to reveal Christ. We don't need to reveal a united people. It's not just revealing a united people. They need to see Jesus. Amen. So when we look at the scriptures, if you look at it, and again, I'm not trying to bash or beat up anybody. But when you look at the book of Acts and it says that these men turned the world upside down and we've got millions of Christians in America. And do you hear any news, even the, yeah, I know there's a lot of fake news out there, but even any of the news that, that you hear in the malls of people being touched or, you know, hospitals, people, you know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen? And it says here that he gave us the apostles, right? So it says he did it because he's obviously going to bring us to that place of maturity to we're all in the unity of the faith. We're not tossed to and fro. It's not going to be about, hey, well, this, this, and no. We're all going to come to that maturity in him. Amen? Amen. So, you know, I want to encourage everybody here. Uh, I know it wasn't too long, hopefully, right? But um, we, we need to, uh, you give me that coffee, forget it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but we need to, you know, really, you know, and I say this, uh, I can't say it enough. 
We need to be real with ourselves. We need to examine our hearts. Ask the Lord to circumcise our hearts. The scripture says that he would circumcise our hearts. Amen. That he would give us a new heart. So he has. Under the new covenant, it says he's written his laws upon our heart. But knowing law and not exercising love behind that law means nothing. Okay? Let me take you back to, you know, you know the scripture in Corinthians chapter 13, the love. So what good is gifting and having all this if the love is not operating? I mean, the Lord made it clear. So bottom line, let's examine ourselves daily, walk with the Lord, pursue him, fall in love with Jesus all over again. I know I have been, you know, so I didn't raise my hand when you asked because for me, I've been so refreshed. God has been really restoring me. I I was, um, and I'll share this testimony with you. I, I was in a place where, from the time that Moses knew me and, and we, I was, you know, uh, trying to get churches locally to unify, I just lost hope. I, I, I went through a dark time where I just was like, I don't see it. People are just so stubborn and we're talking about belie- believers, you know, I'm not talking about the world. Sometimes, it, it, you know, people that are not serving the Lord seem more organized sometimes. You know, you're like, what's going on with this? It's reverse. But there was a moment where I lost my focus and I was like, Lord, you know what? I, I don't see how you're going to get people in unity, man. We, we can't even agree and all this bickering and all this in your church. But it's like what Jesus told Peter. What is that to you? You follow me. So we need to do our part. It starts with us. Amen. It starts with the person in the mirror. You got to do it. Don't worry about if this person is not walking in unity and if that person not. We have to be the change. We have to be the ones to walk in that love. Amen. So anyways, um, you know, hopefully this uh, really impacted some watching. But, you know, again, I, I urge you like Paul. I just really ask that we all understand that we are one body. Like we really need to have love. That this, ain't, this is not competition we see in 1 Corinthians. And it's, it is so ineffective it is uh, a shame before the world when the world sees believers and they can't agree on one thing it's horrible this is not you know and again first corinthians uh we see the division there that was going on and again because people don't understand their identity they're following men and putting their identity in a position and it's not it's none of that it's in christ jesus amen So I want to encourage everyone um, to really start digging deep because no matter how much revelation you have or what what you're uh, studying right now, because of what we're dealing with and what we see in Scripture, unity is key. It doesn't matter what you're... You can study all the theological studies of the Old Testament or whatever. The world is going to hell right now. It's collapsing and we are the ones to... uh, that are the change. We're the light of the world through Christ. So we need to be unified. So we, we're living in a time where we really got to do our part. We have to start discerning the body and saying, man, I love my brothers. Lord, I pray for that pastor. If you drive by a church, don't just drive by a church and go, oh, that's another church. No, pray. You don't have to know that person personally. You don't have to know them physically, right? Face it. You can pray. Does it not say that the prayer of a righteous man, what? avails much so pray for these churches pray and say lord i don't know who the pastor is but i pray for that brother right there this is you know these are my fellow believers my my family members and start praying the more you you know what i find is the more you start interceding you can't stop it's amazing the lord continues to draw you know draw you more into that prayer and praying for people and praying for this and praying for that and i don't think we're short on praying for anything. I don't know. Do you think we're short? You think that we've prayed for everything and there's no need to pray? I don't think so. So, you know, again, I encourage you. I'm sorry. I'm doing the three Puerto Rican clothes thing. All right. But uh, I'm closing with this. That, no, really study the scriptures is important. Absolutely. It's a must. But understand that without love and understanding, you know, what the scripture is trying to convey to us what the Holy Spirit is trying to do and move through us we're a clanging symbol we don't want to be that we want to we want to show the world because Jesus said it's going to happen this is the thing see I'm not closing yet this is the thing 
It's going to happen. You know why? Because God is not a man that he should lie. When he says, I am going to do this, I am going to bring my church to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ, they are going to be unified. They're not going to be a defeated church. Do you think that that word is going to stay like that and it's never going to happen? So the choice is, do we want to be the ones that say, yes, Lord, like Joshua, we will. We will. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. So, again, let us pursue the Lord with everything that is in us in these last days that we're living in. Let us start praying for the churches and asking the Lord to lead us in how we should pray for leaders. You know, which, you know, I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm so excited for uh, the return. So that's going to be awesome. I'm going to be joining in in prayer. But uh, anyways, that, I'm going to close now. So I'm going to pray. <laughs> and uh, we are going to, if it's okay, how many of y'all feel like uh, worshiping a little bit? Oh, yeah. Y'all feel like, do y'all want to be one? Amen. 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 So you want to, we're going to worship all the, the worship team. If you want to come up, Kevin. <laughs> I don't think that coffee was strong enough for that. <laughs> but thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you. Uh, Lord, I give you all the praise, honor, and glory. I thank you for my Revolution family here. Father, I thank you for Pastor Moses. I thank you for his endurance in you, Lord, and uh, just the blessing that he's been to me personally, to my wife, to my household. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for everything that you're doing, the hearts that you're stirring. I pray that... Father, that you would begin to work in us uh, through the Spirit of God, Lord, working in us your word regarding unity. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that unity would become a reality, but through your word, not just something that we uh, think is a good idea, that we understand it from you, from the Father's heart. So, Father, the same way that you gave us Jesus and that you are one with him, we ask that you would make us one, Father. Give us understanding of what that means. Give us an understanding and a revelation of, of your word in that, Lord. So, Father, I just thank you that we do stand together as one tonight. Everyone here in this room, we stand under the banner of Jesus Christ. We stand under that beautiful name, Jesus, whom we love. And so, Lord, I thank you for doing a work of healing, a work of deliverance. Those who are watching, I pray right now that, uh, Holy Spirit, you would begin to touch them, Father God. Those who are in need, Father, that they would understand what unity means, Father God. That it's through you, Lord. It's through Jesus. So, Father, I just release blessings over them, Father God. And I thank you according to your word. I speak blessing in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God. So, Father, we join now and we just take this time to worship you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Don't forget we have hands to clap with. Amen. Mm -hmm.